now we discuss about newton's third law so far we discussed about newton's first law so far we discussed about newton's first law newton's second law now the last law of newton laws newton's third law it is a very simple law and we see so many daily applications in our life this law states for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction suppose there is a table and on the table there is a book is placed now because of the book or because of the weight of the book this weight applied on the book in the downward direction let us say the weight is f1 at the same time table will also apply a force on the book in upward direction which is f2 because of this f1 f2 forces are equal and opposite the book maintains the same state on the table and the state is rest state if f1 is more than f2 the book has to break the table and go inside the table or fall on the floor if f2 is greater than f1 then immediately as soon as you place the book on the table the book has to fly away but both the cases are not happening because how much of force is applying in the downward direction the same amount of force is applied by the table on the book so this f1 and f2 both are equal and opposite and this f1 is called action and f2 is called reaction so f1 f2 are called action reaction forces one point you have to remember that this action and reaction forces will act on two body system not on single body system that is newton's third law is applicable for two bodies not on single body i will explain how in previous class we discussed that <clears throat> there is a body of mass m and two forces are acting f1 and f2 and told that here f1 equals to minus f2 and here also i'm saying f1 equals to minus f2 that means both are formula wise both are same but conceptual wise both are different here f1 f2 are called balancing forces and f1 f2 are acting on single body here f2 f1 f2 are called action reaction forces and acting on two bodies that's why don't confuse newton's third law is applicable for two body system now let us discuss some examples where you can apply newton's third law so example 1 you know this there is a gun it's a trigger and when the trigger is fired when the trigger is pressed a bullet is fired and bullet move in the forward direction and what you experience you experience that this gun will move in the backward direction so firing of bullet moving in forward direction is action and because of action the trigger just moves backward and moving backward is called recoilness and that is reaction so this action reaction pair newton's third law example now another example movement of a rocket or you can say motion of a rocket general rocket moves in upward direction against the gravity because of gas burning in the combustion chamber and this gas comes as gas jet in the downward direction so coming of gas jet in downward direction is action because of that it applies pressure on the rocket in upward direction and rocket moves in the upward which is reaction now take another example this is the water 
and this is the you can say it's a land now there is a boat on the water and you're standing on the boat and you want to jump from the boat to the land so what will you do why when you want to jump from the boat you just push the boat in the backward direction by kicking the board with your legs so that the board moves in backward direction which is action and because of that you move in the forward direction or you jump in the forward direction to the land which is reaction so like that we can give so many examples for newton's third law because it's a very very general law where you can apply in your daily life okay now we discuss about the very basic law in physics and that is conservation of momentum conservation of momentum what is conservation conservation is the word used many times in science areas conservation means remains constant or making constant or never change so conservation of momentum means momentum remains constant means p equal to constant but how the conservation of momentum principle says that when no external force acts on the body on the body then its momentum remains constant this is the statement of conservation of momentum when no external force acts on the body then its momentum remains constant let us try how it is external force so f according to newton's second law f equal to delta p by delta t and is said no external force means f equal to 0 then delta p by delta t is also 0 implies delta p is also equal to 0 because delta t goes there 0 into delta t is 0 now delta p is called change in momentum change in momentum means final momentum minus initial momentum pf is final momentum pi is initial momentum equal to 0 implies pf equal to pi so what it says final momentum equal to initial momentum that means how much starting momentum you have you have the same momentum at the final also that is momentum never changes but that is momentum remains constant so momentum always constant when f equal to zero that is what conservation of momentum so in nature you have many activities have you are seeing and all these activities following this conservation of momentum and this conservation of momentum also is the basis for newton's third law okay so we understand what is conservation of momentum now let us apply conservation of momentum in collisions what is meant by collision collision is nothing but two bodies are hitting with each other like a car hitting another car or a bike hitting a wall a cycle hitting with another cycle so this hitting of two bodies is called collision so in this collision also we can apply conservation of momentum how see here take two marbles having masses m1 m2 and these two marbles are moving in the same direction with initial velocities u1 u2 u1 is the initial velocity of m1 u2 is the initial velocity of m2 now both are collided here collision happened when collision happens what happened this m1 mass applies force on m2 let the force is f12 means force by m1 mass on m2 similarly m2 also applies force on m1 which is f21 force by m2 mass on m1 and both are equal and opposite so this newton's third law applicable here 
so after collision both the bodies again are moving in the same directions with final velocities v1 and v2 so this is the our case now what is how will you apply conservation of momentum here let us see so at the moment when they are collided with each other Newton's third law is applicable so f12 equals to minus f21 equal to opposite forces now according to Newton's second law force is nothing but delta p by delta t isn't it it is also delta p by delta t so delta p by delta t 1 2 delta p by delta t 2 1 minus okay by delta t keep it like this now delta p delta p means change in momentum change in momentum means pf minus pi final momentum minus initial momentum now see force by m1 mass on m2 so this one this force applied by m1 mass on m2 because the force applied by m2 applied by m1 on m2 m2 changes its velocity from u2 to v2 so i will write like this m2 v2 minus m2 u2 now see carefully i told delta p is change in momentum pf minus pi final momentum minus initial momentum means final momentum of mass m2 initial momentum of mass m2 equals to minus of you can keep delta t down no delta p f21 force by m2 on m1 then m1 changes its initial velocity u1 to final velocity v1 so therefore m1 v1 minus m1 u1 all right now you see delta t delta t is cancelled now let us simplify m2 v2 minus m2 u2 equals to minus m1 v1 plus m1 u1 minus minus plus now take minus m1 v1 to the left hand side so then m2 v2 plus m1 v1 equal to this minus m2 u2 taken to the right hand side so m2 u2 plus m1 u1 so implies what we understand that m1 u1 plus m2 u2 equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 so what this formula says m1 u1 mass into velocity of the first body m2 u2 mass into velocity of the second body and u1 u2 are the velocities before collisions so this is the plus sign plus sign means total so total momentum before collision equals to m1 v1 mass into velocity after collision of first body m2 v2 mass into velocity after collision of the second body that means total momentum after collision i can say total momentum total momentum before collision before collision equals to total momentum after collision so mathematically it is proved that total momentum before collision equals to total moment after collision that means what happened to momentum here its momentum remains constant that is the law of conservation of momentum